Hello, in this video we're going to show that a group of order 30 is not simple. So we'll begin by applying Selo's theorem. So we'll let G be a group such that the order of G equals 30. And we'll write 30 as a product of primes, which is just 2 times 3 times 5. Now, Selo's theorem gives us lots of information about the structure of this group. So recall that Selo's theorem tells us that there exists a Selo P subgroup for each prime dividing the order of G. So let's write that down. There exists a Zelo P subgroup for each prime dividing the order of G. So there's a Zelo 2 subgroup, Zelo 3 subgroup, and a Zelo 5 subgroup for this particular group G. Now, Silo's theorem gives us some more information. It tells us how many Silo 2 subgroups we could possibly have. And we have the number of Silo 2 subgroups must divide 3 times 5. And the number of Silo 2 subgroups must be congruent to 1 mod the prime 2. Similarly, the number of Silo 3 subgroups must divide all the factors except 3, which is 2 times 5. And the number of Celo 3 subgroups must be congruent to 1 mod the prime 3. Lastly, the number of Celo 5 subgroups must divide everybody except 5, so that's 2 times 3. And the number of Celo 5 subgroups must be congruent to 1 mod 5. Okay, so let's extract a little bit more information out of these um, things that we've written down so far. So first of all, notice that n sub 2 must divide 3 times 5. In other words, n sub 2 must divide 15. And it's also congruent to 1 mod 2. So one strategy is to list all the factors of 15. The factors of 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15. So n sub 2 must be one of those, but we have this added restriction that n sub 2 is congruent to 1 mod 2. Well, 1 is congruent to 1 mod 2. 3 is also congruent to 1 mod 2, so that's a possibility. And 5 is congruent to 1 mod 2. And 15. So really, all four of these are possibilities for n sub 2. Okay, so let's move on to n sub 3. Here, we have the n sub 3 must divide 10. Well, the only divisors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. Now, n sub 3 must also be congruent to 1 mod 3. And our only choices are 1, not 2, not 5. 10 works. 10 is congruent to 1 mod 3. Lastly, n sub 5 must divide 6. So we'll list the factors of 6. The factors of 6, or the divisors of 6, are 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now n sub 5 has the added restriction that it must be congruent to 1 mod 5, and the only integers in our list that satisfy that are 1 and 6. So we've learned something useful here. For n sub 2, we've got lots of possibilities, and that's a little bit too much information to deal with right now. But for n sub 3 and n sub 5, uh, we've got some, some criteria here that we could play with and maybe get even more information about our group G. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that n sub 3 equals 10, so there's 10 Celo 3 subgroups, and n sub 5 equals 6. In other words, there's 6 Celo 5 subgroups. Now if we do this, we can learn a little bit about the possible number of elements in our group. So let's write this down. n sub 3 equals 10 means the following. In other words, this would imply that there are 10 
acelo-3 subgroups. Now, acelo-3 subgroup in this case is, has just three elements because we have three to the first power in, in our group. And in a acelo-3 subgroup, it's order three, we've got these three elements, two of which are non-identity elements, and one of which is the identity. So that's our counting for our three elements in the acelo-3 subgroup. But now we've got 10 of these, and so these CELO3 subgroups are cyclic groups of order 3. They're all intersecting at just one point. They're intersecting at just one element, namely the identity, but all of the other stuff out there in the leaf there, there's all different sorts of things. They're not intersecting out there, and we know this because uh, groups of prime order only uh, are, are intersecting there in the identity or else they're identical. So. If we count up the number of elements that we have, we've got 10 of these CELO3 subgroups, two non-identity elements in each one. That's 20 non-identity elements. In addition, we have the identity element. We've got one of those. And so this accounts for 21 elements so far. And those 21 elements are captured in these CELO3 subgroups. Now, if we assume that n sub 5 equals 6, this means that there are 6 CELO5 subgroups. Now, our CELO5 subgroups have uh, 5 elements in them. And there are four non-identity elements in the CELO5 subgroup. So we've got six of them, four non-identity elements in each one. That's 24 non-identity elements. So if we look at how many elements we've accounted for so far, um, we're running into a bit of a problem because we have 21 in the CELO3 subgroups and we've got 24 non-identity elements over in the CELO5 subgroups, and these are all different elements. Remember that uh, the order of an element must divide the order of the group, and uh, these are groups of prime order, so these are, there is no uh, double counting of elements here. We've got 45 elements accounted for, which is bigger than the size of our group G. That's a contradiction, and so at this point we can conclude that uh, either n sub 3 equals 1 or n sub 5 equals 1, meaning that either our CELO3 subgroup or CELO5 subgroup is characteristically normal in G, and so G is not a simple group.